You can use InDesign to design anything from a one-sided business card to a book thousands of pages long. But as soon as you go beyond that one-page business card, you're going to need to learn how to manage your pages. Adding pages, moving them around, deleting them, and so on. And that's what we're going to cover here. All of InDesign's page features show up in two places. The Pages submenu underneath the Layout menu, or the Pages panel. But the Pages panel has everything from the menu, plus a lot more. So let's focus on the panel. The very first thing I'm going to change in my Pages panel is the layout, the configuration, because currently it shows each spread one on top of the other. It's just not a very good use of screen real estate. Instead, I'm going to open the Pages panel menu up here in the upper right corner, and I'm going to choose the View Pages submenu, and then I'm going to choose Horizontally. I think Horizontally is a much better use of space, but you can do it either way you want, vertically or horizontally. Now I'm going to add a new page by clicking the New Page button down here at the bottom of the panel. When I click that, it'll add a new page after whatever page is selected in the Pages panel. Right now, both pages 20 and 21 are highlighted, that is, they're selected in the Pages panel. So when I click this button, it'll add a new page after that spread. There it is, my new blank page, page 22. And all the other pages shuffle so they stay in two-page spreads. That's because this is a facing pages document. Now page 22 is selected. That's the new page I just added. And I can click again to add a second page on that spread. Of course, if I knew that I wanted two pages to start with, I probably just should have used the Insert Pages feature. I can get that by going back to the Pages panel flyout menu and choose Insert Pages. That gives me the Insert Pages dialog box, and I can type exactly how many pages I want right here. For example, maybe I want to add one page after page 20. Even though page 20 is not selected in the Pages panel, I can say one page after page 20. You see that the Insert pop-up menu here gives me several options. I can say after that page, before the page, or at the start or end of the document. In this case, I'm just going to click OK, and it adds a single blank page after page 20. Another way to get a new page in InDesign is to duplicate one of the pages that you already have. Now, I find this very useful when I'm laying out pages quickly because I often already have a page that looks approximately like what I want. In this case, I want a duplicate of this spread, pages 22 and 23. So I'm going to select both those pages by clicking on the numbers underneath the spread. Then I'll hold down the Option or the Alt key on my keyboard and drag these numbers until I see a black line appear, or a white line in the case of this dark UI. When I see that line appear, that means put it here after the spread. And when I let go, InDesign makes a duplicate of the spread right where I wanted it. Of course, the Pages panel acts kind of like a slide tray. If you have a bunch of images or slides in a tray, you can move them around anywhere you want, right? So if I want this spread to be somewhere else, all I have to do is click on it and drag it. That moves it to where I want it to be. For example, I'll put this all the way down at the end of the document. Again, I'm looking for that vertical line to tell me where InDesign is going to drop it. As soon as InDesign puts it in place, all the pages reflow to keep the documents as facing pages. There's another way to move pages, too, and that's to choose Move Pages from the Pages panel menu. For example, I might want to move pages 23 and 24 to later, after page 25. So I'll press 23 to 24. That's just a little hyphen in there to say 23 to 24. And then I'm going to say After Page 25. Then I'll click OK, and you can see that those pages got moved. And again, all the pages reflowed to take their place. Finally, sometimes you find you need to delete pages, and you can do that in the Pages panel, too. I'll select this second page in the document just by clicking once on it. And I want to grab these other blank pages I have, too. So I'm going to hold down the Command key or the Control key on Windows and click on them. That lets me select Discontiguous Pages. That means pages that are not next to each other. Now, if you hold down the Shift key, you can actually select Continuous Pages, a range of pages. For example, I'll click on this first page of the document, page 20, and then I'll shift-click on the last page, page 30. That selects all the pages, from 20 to 30. But in this case, that's not actually what I want. So let me click out here where there's no pages. That deselects them. And then once again, I'm going to click on the first blank one, and then Command or Control click on the other blank ones. Now to delete them, all I have to do is click on the little trash can icon at the bottom of the panel. 
Because those pages had nothing on them, InDesign doesn't warn me, it just deletes them. But if I try and select this last page and delete it, InDesign does give me a warning. It tells me that this page has objects on it. Do I really want to delete it? And I say, yes, yes I do. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now it's gone. Now remember, even though these are all called pages, and this is the pages panel, it doesn't necessarily mean print pages. A page in InDesign could be what you see on a screen, like a slide presentation, or a magazine on a tablet. A page is a page is a page.